Hello folks, welcome to this video. Customers just recently sent me a rotor, alternator rotor from a Honda CB650Z, early 80s. Um, it's the same rotor that's fitted to the uh, Honda CB750s, 900s and the CB1100s, the double over cam versions. Um, yeah, so I'm doing this video because the guy that actually sent it to me uh, said we'll be able to take some pictures as I do the rebuild on the rotor and I thought well um, I might as well video it and then post it up on YouTube so you, so he and all you guys and gals out there can see how I do it. Okay, so let's go back to the rotor. Um, yeah, this is the one he's actually sent to me. Now I've actually done it. Um, done the repair and I video clips of it and I'll edit it that and obviously put it on the end of this and I've got another one here that I've had on the shelf for years that I haven't done anything with that is faulty so to test these rotors straight away really you need to um, uh, first of all these rotors are actually constructed of a spinning lump of steel uh, with a coil winding inside them similar to that um, over braided with a material to stop it from um, falling apart and bonded with a special heat heat um, bonded and heated with a, a special bonding material and then obviously the wires are all connected up to the outer slip ring which is actually screwed onto the, uh, the metal section of it um, the screws are actually embedded into the um, material there and they're epoxied over so basically it covers them up you can't see them and stops them from coming out um, but first of all to test these um, how they work I'll go into how they work when you turn your ignition on your bike you get a, a basically you get 12 volts going down to these two slip rings across two slip rings and makes a circuit with inside and this becomes a spinning magnet and when it's spinning it then produces electricity in your outer windings which then charges your battery and the rest of the system on the motorcycle so to test to test these um, get yourself an ohms meter set it to 200 ohms put it between the two slip rings and check what you've got and I don't know whether you can see that coming up on there or not but we got two ohms on there which is far too low and obviously check between one of the slip rings and the body and make sure you've got no continuity well we've got no continuity to ground but we've got poor resistance within the coil inside. And the one I've just done, um, the reading should be between four and six, four to six ohms. And what we've got there between those two slip rings is we've got five ohms and nothing to grind. Should be because I've just done it. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so what we'll do is we'll get down in the workshop and I won't be talking over it, I'll just put messages up as I go along when I edit the video. Um, show sure, how strip it down, how we clean it up and um, reassemble it with the, the epoxy that we use and uh, go from there. So without further ado, we'll get into the workshop and show you how I do it. See you in a bit.
Right, hello folks, welcome back. Um, yeah, so what I've done on that now is I've, uh, you saw me fix that ring to the uh, 
the top of the um, steel section. Uh, there was a layer of epoxy placed between the two, so it makes it firm. I've um, epoxy the the screws over the top to make it look nice and stop them from coming out. Uh, joints have been soldered onto the slip ring and epoxied the wires coming up to the slip ring. Um, so it's all secure now. Um, <coughs> it's been uh, also I've got a local firm down the road that checks it for balance. It wasn't out at all. So you didn't need to uh, do any balancing on it. And also one thing I didn't show is after it was uh, resined up, it was put in a vacuum chamber to remove any air from it. So yeah, these um, type of rotors were fitted to a lot of bikes back in the 80s, like RD250DX, um, Yamaha FZ models, the X, some of the XJ models, a lot of the Hondas had them. This one's actually off the CBX1000, uh, the larger type one. It uses actually the same bobbin in the middle, the coil bobbin in the middle, um, but it's a slightly different design, slightly bigger. That's one I've got on the shelf. In fact, I'll probably get some more of these on the shelf. The reason why I don't really stock these on the shelf, although I've got a load of damaged ones that need doing, is because, as I said earlier, you can get aftermarket ones available. But like I said, the customer for this one wanted the original one done. Um, and once, uh, oh yeah, one thing I will say is when you get it off, try and get it off the bike. Don't, as I said in other videos, don't use a puller, a three-legged puller on the back pull. I'll put a special, uh, the proper tool down inside to extract it off the crankshaft because um, they end up bending it and twisting it. They're quite um, easy to bend. And the way I removed it, dismantled it apart. That's the best way to do it because if you put a puller in between the two forks in there, it will twist it. I've had people send to me and they're basically they're, they're wrecked. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, as I said before, the, this is special wire for these coils. Um, you actually make the coil on a bobbin. I've got a bobbin here that I. Wearing that one, that's actually for the smaller CBX uh, 1000 and CBX 550. Um, yeah, I wind it on the bobbin and the coil machine uh, on the winding machine, um, and then basically you heat it up, get it hot up to I can't remember what the temperature is about 90 degrees, 100 degrees, and it bonds itself. And then you can take it all apart, and it doesn't fall apart. The, the you know the coil the copper wire just doesn't fall apart on you and then you cover it with a like a, a glass tape material terrellene actually I think it is wider stuff than this not uh, not that six mil stuff but anyway yeah anyway um, hope you enjoyed the video uh, give you some sort of idea how they can be prepared, and if you want to have a go at it, feel free, but um, we can do them down here, not a problem. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you up on a, another YouTube video later. Oh, by the way, um, I am meaning to do a video on how you can test these electromagnetic uh, fuel winding coil systems on motorcycles because I do get sent a few that one there's no problems with the items that they send to me and I am going to do a video on how you can test all those um, for even the earlier Hondas um, with the fixed inner field coil um, because I do get sent a few then there's absolutely nothing wrong with it and they've got problems somewhere else on in their charging system i.e. wiring or regulate rectifier or some other connection problem um, so yeah, so when shortly, hopefully, um, I'll get round to doing a video. Anyway, forget all that. Um, in the meantime, have a great time. Catch you again soon. Bye.